Today was the most highly anticipated Patch Tuesday of all time. So Joe, it's January 14th and a Patch Tuesday. What do you have for us? Yeah, I, I would say, it, from my experience, this is the most excited I've ever been about a Patch Tuesday. So, uh, if you follow Brian Krebs, uh, Brian Krebs has been kind of building this, uh, the latest Microsoft patch um, released by the NSA, and it's sort of been a really critical Patch Tuesday, where Microsoft released a patch, the NSA sort of took credit for finding the vulnerability that r necessitated the patch. And basically it's all around uh, the Crypt32 DLL, which is um, vulnerable in Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016 and 2019. And basically the vulnerability, which in the latest article they say it's not actively being exploited, but I think some of Brian Krebs earlier releases said that maybe it was. So I don't know if, you know, who you believe there, but basically it's, a, it's an issue with the potential capability to spoof certificates, the X509 certs, and you know, getting into what Microsoft calls trusted networks. Kind of dangerous, right? If you think you're using a, a cert a certificate and uh, you, you have a trusted connection and then this vulnerability in the DLL allows uh, spoofing of that cert. So pretty um, critical flaw, uh, it affects TLS. Kind of interesting, I think the newsworthy part of it is, is NSA's direct involvement. Uh, from what Krebs said, you know, NSA a lot of times will find these vulnerabilities, but then just give them to Microsoft, let Microsoft patch them, not sort of claim responsibility. But um, Brian Krebs said that uh, it's part of a new sort of PR campaign of the NSA called Turn a New Leaf where they're uh, you know, trying to tout their uh, vulnerability teams and how they're finding stuff and sort of you know, do more attribution and, and take credit for some of their work. And you know, this is a big one. Uh, and and to, well, go let's, ahead. Not, let's not leave out the other half of this. I mean, this, this is Patch Tuesday, so more than one bug is being fixed. Right. Not only do we have the crypto API vulnerability you just described, we also have vulnerabilities in Windows RDP, which right. allow for remote code execution, which is also critical. Right. You know, that's, yep. This is a service that everybody exposes, like we talked about earlier on the show, right. so that someone can remotely get into a, a, a machine and, and administer it that way. And now, even without authenticating to these, these RDP machines, this bug can allow you to do remote code execution. So two really good reasons yeah. to patch. It's a big patch Tuesday. It's a big, <laughs> big patch Tuesday. Yeah. Um, I did want to say the specific to the bug that has to do with crypto API, uh -huh. I think it's limited to elliptic curb cryptography. I think it's that specific. If you, if you use certs that use ECC, that's when you have to be concerned. I mean, honestly, it's the attack is going to be people using spoofed ECC Right. Um, to pretend to be somebody that they're not. And that would be, you know, signed code that's not really signed by the author or host certificates that don't actually represent the host they claim to, to represent. But yeah, no, it's a big deal. And, and I agree with you. It's, it's been hyped up over the last 24, 48 yeah. hours. And uh, I think it's warranted. <laughs> yeah. know, it's, sometimes you get a lot of hype out of, over a lot of nothing. Um, but right. they seem like serious, like for real bugs. And I know DHS um, and... Um, you know, uh, defense.gov, a bunch of different government organizations have been putting out bulletins to their own internal team saying you've got like 10 days to patch. Like, yeah. you gotta get this one. Right, don't ignore this patch Tuesday, yeah. right? So yeah, I mean, I guess advice wise, you know, hopefully Windows update automatic patching is on, but if, if you happen to be one of those uh, organizations or individuals who's, you know, managing your own uh, Microsoft patches, definitely don't miss today's set because like you mentioned there's at least two critical patches and um you know some of the stuff you you depend on in microsoft's os you know it has a potential flaw so mm -hmm. oh, certainly i mean just imagine just the tls portion of it right I mean, if you if you can pretend to be if you can get in the middle of somebody else's traffic and then convincingly pretend to be that site by faking an, uh, an ecc certificate you can do all sorts of damage i mean you can Absolutely. pretend to basically be I don't know, Amazon, if you wanted right. to. Google. Or Google, yeah, or right. yeah, or the D Department of Defense. Yeah. Um, or you can tr convince somebody that the update that you're, you're intercepting and pushing to their machine was, was signed by Microsoft. Right. Like, this is like a 
core functionality is being able to prove that something is what it's claiming to be, and this this blows it completely to smithereens. Yeah, it's like it's like we've been saying when you get down to the library, the DLL level, this is something that's pretty core to what you're expecting to be, mm -hmm. you know, secure code on your software. So. Yep. And I think we were saying that Windows 10 is a, a, affected by the crypto API stuff. Yeah. And the RDP stuff also applies to Windows 7. Okay. As well, and then the server versions as well. I'm, I'm reading here. So Crypto API is 32 or 64-bit Windows 10, and then Windows Server 2016, 2019. Yep. RDP is Windows Server 2012 and newer, and then Windows 7 and newer. Now, the other interesting thing is that I think this is the last patch Tuesday where Windows 7 is actually going to get patches. I think after this, it's, it's no longer officially getting patches. Now, whether they have some sort of um, yeah, agreement with some companies for extended right. support, you know, I, I can't really say, but... Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a nice big one for uh, to go out with go out seven. with a bang, right? Yeah, Tony, what do you think? Any thoughts? Scary, you know, yeah. the, this this sort of vulnerability is is not something to take lightly, as as you guys said. And definitely patch immediately um, if if there's um, word out there saying you know patch when you can or given X amount of days. I feel that this is one that it shouldn't be X amount of days. It should be grab the patch do your initial testing, get it pushed out and deployed out to your infrastructure right away. It's very, very important. Going back to, you know, the TLS thing you guys were talking about, you know, the websites and all that, but there's also a lot of other aspects that TLS is used. A, a prime example would be uh, doing point-to-point uh, -point encryption for email, uh, going from one business to another so you are defined as I'm coming from said company, and then you can go into all these other aspects of now that that company believes that I'm someone else, now I can inject a bunch of uh, BEC or, you know, any sort of email communication that maybe they've got different settings in there that if it's coming from said company, they don't have to restrict or do a lot of security around it because it's a trusted source. And then you can allow, you know, the Pandora's box of anything going through through that that form of communication, so this is this is uh, you know something that's it's really really big, and I just hope that people you know just get out there and identify and patch as as quickly as they can with it. Um, I did have a question though. I heard earlier, uh, not during our show, but uh, earlier in the day, that the 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 cryptography one actually wasn't just Windows 10 and. Uh, uh, the server, but it was all operating systems because the DLL was was much older. Is that an inaccurate statement that I heard? Yeah, I mean, so Microsoft is pointing to these versions, but I think what I saw from Brian Krebs was that he thinks it's likely that these these versions are the ones where this DLL is the most sort of commonly used and, and it's criti okay. most critical, but you're right, this DLL probably exists in older versions, but I think his read on it at least is that it's, you know, that's, those are the versions where Crypt32 is, is most, you know, critically used. Hmm. I guess we're going to have to wait and see what the analysis is. Right, yeah, like you, you had said before the show, Matt, that, you know, this is breaking, like this happened, we were... You know, we, were, we were trying to squeeze it into the yeah, show. We yeah, we were following tweets and okay. chatting about it all morning, and you know, probably in the next couple of days, even before you know our show publishes, there there will be more details on what exactly the situation is, mm -hmm. what's affected, um, how it came about. So we're probably you know hopefully late in the game enough to inform everybody, but I'm sure there's more to come on this. I agree. So the short answer to what you should do is patch. And at this point, there's no better mitigation than just patching. So, highly recommended that everyone patch.